Okay, so we're going to continue our frequency distribution table wherein we're going to add some more terms in the table. Now, here is the data that I have. Now, you can make a frequency distribution table. You can first pause it so that you can try to make one. But after making your frequency distribution table, your table would look like this. Now, in this table, you would observe that I already added these terms and these three columns. These three ter these five terms, I mean, these five terms would be the one that we're going to add. They are under the measures of central tendencies and the measures of variation. Again, similar to what I have did in the frequency distribution table video, the formulas that I'm going to do here are the formulas we're going to do in Excel. But all the formulas you need is in your handouts. Okay, it's in the handouts. So all you need to do is to open the handout so that you would see what formula I used, how it was converted into an Excel formula. So again, I repeat, I added these three columns. It is because I need these three columns in solving for this five. This is measures of central tendencies. This is mean, mean, and mode for the measures of central tendencies. And the measures of variation would be variance and standard deviation. So as I go in the discussion, I'm going to one by one discuss what are this five. All right. So again, as I have mentioned, we're going to add these three columns. So these three columns as stated in the headings FCM, CM squared, and FCM squared. This is very easy because all we need to do is to get, again, the bias that we got here. Alright, so it would be in array. So all we need to do is to click the values we're going to use. For example, for FCM, that would be frequency multiplied to the class mark. So that would be FCM. For CM squared, that would be CM. You can do it multiply to another cm if you want to do that but we can also use the function that's found on keypad number six so that would be squared all right so that would be 128 squared and then last column f multiplied to cm squared that would be the frequency multiplied to cm squared Okay, so we can copy paste this again. Shortcut keys, Control C, Control V. You can use it, or you can just drag it down. Now, before before solving for this five, we also need the sum, right? We also need the sum of the FCM and FCM squared. Again, why? It is because if you already have browsed the formula that we're going to use. For the measures of central tendencies and measures of variation, the sum of FCM and the sum of FCM squared is needed. All right. Now, so again, as I have mentioned, we will add these five terms in our frequency distribution table. So what are these? So first would be the measures of central tendencies. So for the measures of central tendencies, what we're going to do there is to determine the center of our group data. So again, for the mean median mode, it is possible that the values on our mean median mode would be equal if and only if it would be a normal distributed curve. So a normal distributed curve, that is the curve wherein it looks like a bell-shaped curve, a normal distributed curve. But obviously, based on the graphs that we got here, it doesn't even look a bell. So, for sure, our mean median mode would be different from each other. But again, our mean median mode can be equal to each other. Alright, so for the mean, mean is called an average value. Alright, mean is called an average value. And on the formula that we're going to use for mean, that, that's the easiest formula among the five. Is just using the sum of FCM and dividing it with N. All right, with the number of your data. So you would observe that our 
our mean would be 157.425. Alright? Now, one way, one way to check, if you, uh, yeah, so our N is 40. And you would observe here in our data and in our community frequency, 20 is the center of 40, all right? So our mean should be around this groups. You can find your mean around this group since this is 21, 157. So it is around here. Which is, if you're going to look at our data, it's in the middle, right? Because there are three groups above, there are three groups below, and this is our mean. It can be found here. Next, for the median, for the median, it is called a positional value. So for median, since it is a positional value, then the word position, the word position is very important. But here, in a group data, we're not going to arrange our data highest to lowest, lowest to highest because of the position for us to determine the center. But what we're going to do is we're going to need the half value, which is n over 2. Alright, so for n over 2, we're going to divide n over 2. That would be our basis. And we're going to look it here on our increasing cumulative frequency. So what are we going to do? So for n over 2, we're going to now determine what we call a median class interval. That median class interval, that is where we're going to get the values we need in the formula in solving for the median. So, since n over 2 is 20, and if I'm going to look and compare on the increasing commutative frequency, 20 is not there. But, there is a value greater than 20. So what we're going to do to determine the median class interval, again, I repeat, to determine the median class interval, what we're going to do is to get the next number higher than n over 2. Alright, so n divided by 2. Since n divided by 2 is 20, alright, is 20, so we're going to use the next number higher than 20, which is 21. Now, again, what's the purpose of this? It is because we are going to get the values on that median class interval in the formula of median. So, what's the formula of median? In the formula of median, we start with LCB of the median class interval. Now, again, in the formula, there are divisions, there are operations in the formula. So, Please do remember that Excel follows PEMDAS rule. Now, if Excel follows PEMDAS rule, then therefore, in the median Excel formula, what I'm going to do is to put four grouping symbols. The reason for these four grouping symbols so that Excel would solve the innermost parentheses first before solving everything. All right? So, in the formula, the first would be n divided by 2. And then I close it minus the commutative frequency of before, before the median class interval. So you would observe again, this median class interval is very important so that we would know what values are we going to use for the formula. So that would be commutative frequency before divided by the frequency of the median class interval, right? And then multiplied to the class width. So as you can see, I opened four grouping symbols and then every operation I closed one grouping symbol because Excel follows PEMDAS rule. Now, if I'm going to press enter, you would observe here that the value is 153.9286. 153.9286 falls on this interval. So one way to check if your, your, your value is correct, your 
median value should fall where the median class interval is. Alright, so since this is 153.928610, therefore it should also fall on this group. Alright, so again, I repeat for the median class interval, what we're going to do is n over 2, and we're going to compare it on increasing commutative frequency. We're going to take the next number higher. Now, so for the last. Measures of central tendency, it is mode. And mode is called a frequency value. Alright, so first, average value. Second is the position, so that would be n over 2. The last would be mode, which is frequency value. Again, for the frequency value from the word frequency, frequent, we're going to determine which is the most frequent group. And to determine that most frequent group, we're just going to look at the frequency. Alright? We're just going to look at the frequency. We're going to determine which is the most frequent or which is the highest frequency. And we would observe that the highest frequency is this one, this interval. Alright? So on this interval, we're going to <clears throat> find here our mode. Why? Because if we're going to look at our frequency, 8 is the highest. 8 is the highest, right? So, again, in the formula, there is a D1, D2. This D1, D2 is a difference 1, difference 2, wherein the formula is, for D1, the frequency of the modal class interval. So, the orange is called the modal class interval. Modal class interval subtracted to the frequency before all right so for d2 that would be the frequency modal minus the frequency after and so again we press enter and our d2 would be equivalent to 5. so again this d1 and d2 we got this two is because we determined our modal class interval. Again, to determine the modal class interval, that would be looking at our frequency and selecting the highest or the most frequent. Now, similar to median, the reason why we need this modal class interval is because that's where we're going to get the values. So first of all, as you have seen a while ago for the difference 1, difference 2, we need the modal class interval to determine D1, D2. For the mode, the formula of the mode, again, the formulas can be seen in the handouts. The formula of the mode is LCB, which is the lower class boundary of the modal class interval, plus, again, I'm going to do two grouping symbols here. It's because we will follow, Excel follows PEMDAS rule, right? And the formula of mode would be D1 divided by the sum of D1 and D2. Alright? So, as you can see here in the formula, D1, D2, the denominator, I place a grouping symbol so that Excel would first solve this before using it as a denominator for this F10. And then, we're going to multiply it to the class interval. All right, so two grouping symbols is already closed, so they have the same color. So we're going to press enter, and our value would be 182.3889. Again, similar to median, this value of our mode should be in this interval also. So for us to determine if it would be well, one way to determine if it would be correct or not, this value should fall where the median class interval and modal class interval be. Alright, now, it is also possible that we have two or three or more modes. Alright, so for the mode, you can have it only one because there's only one highest value, and that would be called unimodal. But it is also possible that there are two, there are three, 
there are four because all we need to do would be to add prefixes so what are we going to do if that happens then therefore you're going to have another mode here and another difference one difference two depending on where that modal class interval would be all right but here on our example we only have one all right so for the measures of central tendencies again you would observe the values are not equal again because it is not a normal distributed curve and they have their own way to solve it all right now for the measures of variation the measures of variation would tell us how dispersed our data are so meaning how far from each other our data are and in the measures of variation the best measures of variation would be standard deviation there are also three measures of variation the other one is this one range but in the range this is the weakest measures of variation so we're not going to use it in determining how dispersed our data are but the best would be to use the standard deviation to determine how dispersed our data are now again as I was saying, how dispersed our data are. So if your standard deviation is equivalent to zero, it only means that your data are equal to each other. All right? Because since they are not dispersed, your standard deviation would be zero. Now, we are not expecting our standard deviation here to be zero because as you can see, our data, they're not equal to each other. All right? So how are we going to solve it? Again, in the variance, the formula would be, okay, in the variance, the formula would be n multiplied to the sum of fcm squared. So that's the reason why I got the sum is because we're going to need it. And then subtracted to the sum of fcm and we're going to square it. All right, so this would be the numerator. This would be the numerator of our variance, and there's also a denominator wherein the denominator would be, that would be n multiplied to the difference of n minus 1. All right, so again, it would be n multiplied to fcm squared minus the square of fcm divided by n times n minus 1. Enter. So this would be our value. All right? This would be our value. Now, for the standard deviation, all you need to do for the standard, devi of dev uh, standard deviation would do a square root of your variance. And in doing a square root of your variance, all you need to do is to use the function squirt or SQRT. So we're going to use the function sqrt and we're going to select the value that we want to do a square to. All right. There. So now you would see that the standard deviation would be 22.05. Again, how dispersed your data are. It only suggests that the data would be dispersed around 22 values from each other. Okay. So on the next video, we're going to already discuss the last that we're going to add in our table.